Currently here at St. Andrews, we're very fortunate to have a wonderful installation called Icons and Transformation. And as we live with these wonderful icons for this period of time up through Easter Sunday, um, I'd like to share some few thoughts about icons and contemplation. It was the monk from, Saint, uh, from Gethsemane Monastery in Kentucky, Thomas Merton, who said, to think about praying is actually already to be praying. And the presence of these icons around on the walls, really for us, is an invitation for anybody who uses or views icons. It's an invitation to enter into prayer. It's already an invitation to kind of move out of a comfort zone, to move towards a borderland in our own spiritual experience, maybe to cross that borderland into a, a new um, frontier for us of prayer and contemplation. Uh, it is, in a way, to an invitation to inhabit these icons and to allow them to inhabit us in a kind of a strange way to be inhabited by that strange world, which I think many of us consider to be a strange world, to look at an ancient icon if we're not familiar with them. To, um, I'm reminded of the word gaze. Lovers gaze into one another's eyes, at least early in their relationship. They do, and that is a matter of both looking at each other. So the, the looker, one looker, is being looked at simultaneous to looking. That is the invitation that we have to gaze at these. I'm struck with how many of the icons use the theme of eyes. So that we're not only looking at the icons, but whatever it is about the icons is looking at us simultaneously to look at each other. So uh, contemplation of the icons can be um, an invitation to an intimate and transforming encounter with ourselves and also with God. Uh, Richard of St. Victor, an ancient writer and theologian, spiritual writer, who died in 1173, defined or described contemplation this way, and I'll say it slowly. Contemplation is a free and clear vision of the mind. A free and clear vision of the mind. Fixed upon the manifestation of wisdom in suspended wonder. The manifestation of wisdom in suspended wonder. There are three things to note about that particular definition. I think it's a particularly engaging one. It's an activity in which the mind is liberated from surrounding distractions. It's to focus, remind you, I talked about gazing, to fix your gaze in a, in a concentrated way means that it's an, it's an invitation for the mind to rid itself of surrounding distractions and to focus, to perceive clearly what it is one is looking at and even beyond that. There may be some darkness in the experience of contemplation, but it's the darkness of the mysterious. It's the darkness of the unknown. It's the darkness of what is coming at us as we gaze at the icons. What? Secondly, the mind here is not primarily uh, understood as a rational activity. It's not irrational, but it's not primarily a discursive, rational activity uh, that seeks to kind of control, to analyze, to describe, to measure, to remark about the paint or, or the figures or the texture uh, in a kind of a rational, descriptive way. Rather, the mind being used here, I think in that definition, is the desire of our whole selves, our whole beings for deep understanding. For you almost have, want to say bodily understanding, being perceived and perceiving the physicality of the icon as a physical human being, to understand that relationship 
with the intelligible is something we arrive at, not just with our minds, but with our whole beings. The third thing is that the mind's vision uh, is held in suspended wonder. That's a wonderful phrase, isn't it? Just think about it. Suspended wonder. We're not suspending our senses. In fact, we're activating them, or they're being activated in a kind of an acute manner into profound engagement. So the mind here is encompassing the whole self. Lastly, this understanding of contemplation, as we look around at these wonderful, wonderful icons and consider spending some time with them, says that what the mind is fixed on is in, in a, by an act of suspended wonder is the manifestation of wisdom. In other words, being grasped by the self-disclosure of wisdom that comes at us as we come at the icons. Cohabitating, in a sense, with the icons. Um, so it's Sophia, ancient understanding of wisdom, the wisdom that was with God before the foundations of the world, that wisdom about life and about love and about God coming at us, disclosing itself to us in particular way, breaking through into our consciousness. To contemplate is to expect all of those things. Something that we're invited into rather than primarily something that we do. Something that we are invited into rather than primarily something that we do. So here is the invitation to icons and contemplation and to the kind of strange world of these contemporary icons and to the ancient ones that are surrounding us also in the nave and the sanctuary here at St. Andrews. So it is to perceive clearly. It is to be taken up and giving oneself to the mind's vision to engage profoundly with what happens when we spend time and to be grasped by some new wisdom about ourselves and about God. So while we have these icons here, that's the invitation. And uh, of all of us, we're invited to use them in that manner and to experience the deepness of contemplation.